Revelation 19 verse 11 and says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. He's righteous. You know, a lot of people say, well, why does God have to punish anybody? Why can't he just, why can't he just love everybody and accept everybody? Because that wouldn't be righteous. Who would want to live in a heaven where people could just do whatever they wanted to without consequence. That would be, you, you wouldn't even want to live in a family like that, let alone in heaven. It would be chaotic. It would be wicked. It would be full of turmoil. All right, so verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Wait a second. I drove down by this church uh, years ago, in Minneapolis and there was a big picture of Jesus on there with his arms wide open and a big beating heart there that just said love. I, I thought that's what Jesus looks like when we see him in the Bible. Love for all. Right? He, it, it is love for all. All who will accept. All who re, will repent. But here we see him with eyes as a flame of fire. Okay? And he hath and he was verse 13 and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. Uh, verse 15, and out, now check this out, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should, that with it is he going to hug all the nations? Sing songs of tolerance to them? No, he's going to smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Now that's the picture that we're not seeing of Jesus today in our churches today. And it's not bringing true repentance. It's not breeding true Christians. It's breeding these people and these denominations that now actually accept openly avowed homosexuals as their spiritual leaders, their pastors. Um, that's why we've gotten that way. That, that's why we've gotten this far. And then you got Pete the Sodomite running for president uh, who, who says that um, we're not Christian and we, we can't claim to be Christian because we, uh, d we're not accepting, we're not loving of the LGBT community and we... Uh, we don't allow Ill, illegal immigration. All right. So, what is the purpose of this sword here? It is to... Now, now what's interesting, we're going to see these combined together in one. We're going to see the sword of God's wrath. All right. Whenever we see the sword, it represents God's wrath, his punishment. And it also represents the word of God. How do these two combine into one? Well, they both serve the same purpose. One does the physical punishments and one exposes their lies. But the, they do the same thing in that they both inflict harm upon the enemies of God. When you tell the truth, it exposes the lies. It hurts Satan's kingdom. God's word is like a sharp sword that, that, um, that attacks him. Okay? Um, verse 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 17, and I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Now, this is when he says supper of the great God, he's using um, a little bit of irony here. I'm trying to think of the right word. He's. He's being sarcastic. As you'll see here, verse 18, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit upon them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. That's a lot of dead bodies that we're seeing here. Um, that the word of God uh, that we're going to see here, the sword that comes out of Jesus' mouth is going to be what causes this. It's the sword of his wrath. Now, we know from places like Psalm chapter 2 why this is happening. It's because the kings and the rulers of this world uh, have conspired against Christ. They've conspired against him and said, we don't want 
him to rule over us. We don't want his ways. We don't want to follow his ways, and therefore we are going to stand against him. And we're seeing this happen increasingly more and more every day where the anti-Christians actually led in, in America primarily by the Democrat Party. The, you know, a lot of people say, a lot of uh, Christian pastors say, we don't want to talk about politics from the pulpit. We only talk about Jesus saves. And they're only talking about the cross, right? That's all we want to talk about here. This is a sanctuary. Well, here God's word is talking about political leaders in prophecy being slain by his sword. So we can't separate the two, okay? Um, they all play a part in God's plan. All right, so verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And like I said, th the beast, we're seeing it assemble today. And the Democrat Party is a part of that beast. They're assembling together people and nations that are opposing Christ. That's why we have uh, a party that supports abortion. That's why we have a party that, support, that removes God from their platform and, and, and promote every other sort of wickedness and foolishness. Verse 20, and the beast was taken, this beast we're going to find out, we're not going to go into it today, but is a one world political system. With him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, and which, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast, and them that uh, worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Uh, th that's a pretty graphic picture again. Not only are these flesh people going to be slain with the sword of God's wrath, but this, this, uh, now we see this beast and the false prophet thrown into the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. Okay, this is not a soft Jesus tolerates everybody type of uh, passage here. Verse 21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Um, which sword... Proceed, now check this out. Which sword proceedeth out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. In other words, God said, the angel was calling out with a loud voice, all you birds, you're going to, all you uh, carnival, or what do you call those birds? Those scavengers, uh, crows and whatever, big blackbirds, you're going to have a big supper, so why don't you gather together and get ready here because I'm going to feed you some, a, a lot of nice food here. The flesh of these people. This is graphic. And it's supposed to be graphic. And this, you know, any gospel that doesn't teach these scriptures is not a gospel at all. It's a, it's a false gospel. It's a, it's a um, well, I'll, I'll say it this way. Someone might say, well, this, this isn't very loving. You know, we don't read passages like this at our church. Uh, we kind of skip over those. And um, we just, like I said before, we just talk about the love of Jesus, and we, t we do talk about the cross. We, talks about, we talk about how Jesus died for our sins and stuff like that, but, uh, but, but this is a little bit too much. We have to skip over that because there are little kids in the room that might get scared by Jesus with a sword and, and all this blood that he's going to be shedding, and, and we, we can't have that in our church. This is a house of God, you know, <laughs> and... Um, Anyways, you know, you guys have seen them. Those pastors that stand up there and, you know, they, get, they, they look like twinkle toes up there, you know, just real feminine saying. And they start out, the, they don't start out by studying the word. What they do is they, they start telling you about, um, uh, they're trying to capture some truth into your mind. They said, you know, I was at the store the other day and I came across something that just really made me stop and think about the love of Jesus. You know, um, and they'll go on and on about this, and you're, and you're waiting for them to actually get into the Bible, and they never do. And that's what's replaced the Word of God, is men's words and men's nonsense. Um, you know, anybody who would say that, who would say we can't read verses like this, or we, can only, um, we only talk about the loving Jesus, they've actually carved out, in their, with their own vain imagination, and, uh, their own Jesus. They've created their own Jesus because that's not the Jesus of the Bible. That's a, a false Jesus. That's, that's idolatry. Um, so, in other words, I'll, I'll, I'll simplify this. These people could have avoided this, all these kings and rulers. God didn't want 
to have to do this, but they refuse to accept him. And uh, you refuse the cross, you get the sword. Just like Deuteronomy 32 verse 41 says, now check this out. If I, God says, if I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and I will reward them that hate me.